Hello Bitsbury, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with another video and in this one I'm going to be making a diorama from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So this is the scene where King Arthur and Patsy encounter the Black Knight. Um, one of my favourite scenes in the movie, um, there are many to choose from of course. Um, but I've gone with this one because I saw these miniatures available to 3D print from Highland Miniatures. I've used some of their stuff in the past and they have some absolutely excellent sculpts. So yeah, they had King Arthur, Patsy and the Black Knight, and when I saw them I knew I just had to make a little diorama out of them, so that's what I've done. Um, I've also 3D printed this tent as well, um, I can't remember off the top of my head where I got it from, but I will put a link down in the description, it was part of a set of multiple bits and pieces, and yeah, all together they will make up the scene, and I'll show you exactly how I made the rest of the diorama. So let's um, hit the desk and we'll get straight into it. So I'll start with taking a piece of paper, and I've got the miniatures just super glued on 25mm bases. Um, it just makes them easier to paint, and I sort of mark out where they're going to be, and I draw in the river, and then the little bridge. What I love about this scene is that it's such a tiny little gap to get past, and such a little bridge that they could easily just go round, but um, it's all part of the comedy. I had some little circles for where I'm going to put some trees. So there's some little ones off to the knight's left, and then sort of a big one behind him. And then mark out a shape uh, roughly, but I'm going to cut this template too, as it's not going to be a big square. Make it a bit more interesting. And here it is cut out, so it's almost in the shape of a foot, which I quite like. And yeah, I made the sort of stream a little bit wider. Just move the trees forward a little bit. So I've cut that out, and I've got this pack and foam. That I'm going to use for my top layer, and I've marked on where the little stream is going to be, and this pink foam is going to be the bottom layer, so I'm going to chop along these, and where the um, lines are, that's where I'm going to sort of bevel the edges for the little stream. So I start by taking some scissors just to cut the pattern foam, and scissors cut the stuff um, really easily. Once I've got shape, I'm going to take a knife just to cut out where the stream is. Now you can cut the stuff with a knife as well as the scissors. It does cut quite easily with a knife, as you can see. The only problem with the knife is that um, it is a bit harder to bevel. You could possibly use a hot wire cutter. I haven't tried it on this material, um, just out of fear of it sort of singeing. It's not like the normal sort of harder foam. Um, but I do manage to get there with a knife, just scraping away little bits, and it does create quite a nice natural looking bevel. Just don't um, try to cut away from yourself if you can. And then I can glue this down onto the pink foam, which I've also cut out to the same shape. And I take some Gorilla Wood Glue to do this. And it's literally a case of just squirting it on, and then getting a spatula or an old brush just to spread it around. And this stuff is really strong which is why I like using it, but it will take a while to dry um, so I end up leaving this overnight and then once it is dry and nice and strong I can start adding some ground cover so I like to use a mixture of different fixed uh, thicknesses so I've got this sort of terrain sand from Greensoft World I've got this really fine modelling sand that I think GW done and also from GW these sort of um, little stones and there's a few other bits of flock and stuff in there as well and then we go back to the Gorilla Glue and again, it's just a case of spreading it all over the top with an old brush or spatula. And once you've got a nice even coverage of that, you can start sprinkling on your model sand and stuff. And it probably would have been a better idea to do this over a box or have a bit of newspaper down or something, because it does get quite messy, but that's fine. And once that's dry, that is pretty rock hard. And next I'm going to make the little bridge. So I'm not sure if a bridge is actually um, made of wood or what. Um, there's a lot of leaves, uh, leaf litter and stuff over it. But I'm going to make it, uh, make it look like it's out of wood. And I take these little coffee stirrers, cut them down to the right size. I think I'll go about four thick. Like so. And um, they're really easy just to 
chop up with your normal hobby snips. You can see they're, they're pretty good size for the Black Knight miniature. And I just do a couple going across to hold it all together. And I glue that in place and then I can work on the trees. You can see I've got one tree in already. So these are just um, old sort of ivy roots. Uh, I soaked them in vegetable glycerin and then just baked them at low temperature in the oven. There's videos on YouTube to show how to do this, but that will stop them from getting any rot further down the line. And I just picked out some interesting shapes. Then you can glue them in place um, using some hot glue. I used hot glue instead of the Gorilla Glue as it dries really fast, so it holds them in place and they don't really react well with gravity. You could pin them if you so wish, that would make it a lot easier. But I find the um, hot glue does um, give them a really strong bond as well. And I use a fair bit and then I can just cover it back up with some more flock. And then once I've done that and it's all dry, it looks like this. And I've had some cardstock around the edges as well. That'll just give us a nice flat edge. So next up I'm taking some Millie Putt and rolling it into little sausages. And this is going to be used to make some roots coming off the trees like so. So at first I tried just sculpting them directly onto the piece. And it was okay, but it did get a bit awkward. So what I ended up doing was just rolling out loads of little random sausages at different lengths, making them look like roots. And then once they were dried, I just super glued them in place. You can see it's just a bit awkward on I'm trying to do it this way. And once all that was dry, that looked quite good. I had a little bit of debris in there as well, with just some leftover coffee stirrer bits. So now it's time to paint this, and I take some black acrylic mixed with um, Mod Podge. Anyone who's watched um, Jeremy's videos on the Black Magic Craft will know exactly where I got this from. Uh, it acts as a sealant as well as giving it a base coat. And yeah, I started by using a little brush here, but I do switch to a larger brush and manage to coat this a lot quicker. Then I take some brown acrylic mixed with some white to do the ground, and I just use the pure brown on all the trees. Once this is dry, I use that lighter brown mix to dry brush the trees to give them a highlight, and then I take a bone colour, which I think was Screaming Skull from Citadel, to highlight the ground. And once it's all dry, it looks like this. I've also painted the tent and put that in place as well. So next up, I'm taking some of this leaf litter. This is from Javis or Javis Countryside Scenics. Got us on eBay. I've got two colours in the end. I've got like a brown and a green mix, just to give some variety. So yeah, I think the scene is sort of set in sort of late summer, early autumn. There's a lot of leaves on the ground. There's still some on the trees, but I didn't really have anything to put leaves on these trees, so I just kept them bare. So, um, there's obviously going to be little bits of inaccuracies in this diorama. I don't care personally, but I'm sure there'll be people out there who might be annoyed at it, but I apologise. <laughs> but yeah, just take the gorilla, gorilla Glue again and just place it in loads of random spots where I want to have the leaf litter. Then it's simply just a case of sprinkling it on. And because I'm using the two colours, I'll sprinkle it on quite randomly with one and then fill in the gaps with the other until it starts building up and the Gorilla Glue will dry nice and clear so you won't see that afterwards. So now it's a case of painting the stream underneath and I take this triple thick uh, gloss glaze which works quite well as a um, water effect. I mix some Militarum green contrast paint in with it and apply it all over. I also wait for it to dry before applying another coat. Then it's a case of super gluing the miniatures in place. The Black Knight was really annoying to try and get to stand up, but he'd done it in the end. King Arthur was quite easy because he had the little peg on his foot, so I just made a little hole for that to stand in. And Patsy just stood up very nicely. 
And lastly, I 3D printed a little plaque which says none shall pass, which I painted up using brown and gold. And then that was also super glued onto the front. And with that, the diorama is complete. And here we have the final diorama. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Considering it's the first sort of proper diorama that I've ever made, I'm quite happy with it. In hindsight, I probably won't use that Packham foam again. It's just a bit soft. Um, the top layer is like really rock solid, but you can still push down on it because it's quite spongy underneath. But I'm not going to be manhandling this much, so it doesn't really matter. A uh, big shout out to Highland Miniatures for making the STL files for these three miniatures. As soon as I saw them, I knew I had to make a little diorama or something for them. So yeah, um, big shout out to them. I'll put links in the description down below where you can find them. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and thank you so much for watching, and before we go, I'm going to leave you with this. You fight with the strength of many men, Sir Knight. I am Arthur, King of the Britons. I seek the finest and the bravest knights in the land to join me in my court at Camelot. You have proved yourself worthy. Will you join me? You make me sad. So be it. Come, Patsy. None shall pass. What? None shall pass. I have no quarrel with you, good Sir Knight, but I must cross this bridge. Then you shall die. I command you as King of the Britons to stand aside. I move for no man. So be it. All right, we're calling a draw. Come, Patsy. Oh, oh, I see. Running away, eh? You yellow bastards, come back here and take what's coming to you. I'll bite your legs off. <laughs>